and our Jamie Weiss was actually there for that second shooting at 2.30. As you're trying to get your report ready on what's happened at 1 o'clock, you were so close to that gunfire between these two females. Yeah, not only us, Scott, but all the people that were in this neighborhood, they were in the middle of it too. We got here not long after 1 o'clock after the initial shooting was called out. We're gathering some information. We had just done a live report on the air when all chaos broke out in the middle of the crowd. It started as an upset woman who family says saw the body of her loved one dead on the ground. Over to 26 and Elliott where we saw her while we were live on the air. The next thing we know there was arguing and shots fired. Photographer James Thomas and I took cover in the back of our live truck and watched like everyone else who was taking cover on the ground. We now know, according to police, one of the women involved in that argument shot and killed the one she was fighting with. Police say they then shot the shooter who was taken to the hospital. Now, friends and family of those two women involved tell us that uh, both of them actually knew or somehow related to the two men who actually died in that initial shooting. We, at the minute we heard the gunshots, we jumped inside the live truck. Uh, that's where we were shooting our video from. A very scary moments, not only for us, but that entire crowd that was out there. You saw them lying on the ground trying to stay out of the way. Yeah, and we're glad you're safe and that everyone in that area was not hit by gunfire because not only was the woman shot, but then when police opened to fire on the shooter, there were a lot of shots fired. Yeah, I heard at least 10 and they were going off really quick. By the time we realized what was going on, we jumped in the truck. I I think the last shot was going off, so everybody was very much exposed. A frantic scene in West Louisville as shots were fired while police investigate two different shootings that have left three people dead. Thanks for joining us at 11. I'm Janelle McDonald. Scott is on assignment. This has been a day unlike anyone in our newsroom can remember. And now as our city struggles with what to do in the aftermath of this West Louisville violence, We'll tell you more about it. It started as police rushed to the area of 32nd and Kentucky streets in the Parkland neighborhood. But that was just the beginning of a very violent, a very chaotic scene for Metro Police. We have live team coverage tonight of the West Louisville violence. Let's start with Scott at LMPD headquarters to help sort out, Scott, how exactly all of this unfolded. Well, Janelle, police know the scene of the shootings well. They've been there many times before. Officers tell me that intersection at 32nd in Kentucky is known by Crips gang members as 3-2 Ward, well known for violence, but nothing like what erupted there shortly after 1 o'clock this afternoon. At least four people opened fire, a barrage of bullets. The shooting kept going even after the first officers arrived. More than 50 shots fired in all. Police tell us 22-year-old Craig Bland Jr. died on the porch of his residence on 32nd Street. 24-year-old Tyson Mims died on the sidewalk. And we've learned Mims died in the exact location where police say he shot and killed Alfred Smith in March of 2009, but the case was later dropped. Instead of dozens of kids coming home from school, Neighbors watched as dozens of police combed the scene. A third shooting victim taken to the hospital in serious condition. Another man wounded drove away from the scene. Speeding truck for respond. I'm at a call with EMS and police. Police are on the scene. 2526 Elliott. You have a male that's been shot in the leg. That man had non-life-threatening injuries. And while police continued to search for evidence and neighbors tried to comprehend the mid-afternoon gunfight right by their homes, Another shooting just a block away 90 minutes later. Police say two women who knew those involved in the shootout started arguing, and one shot and killed the other, McKee Lee. It happened right next to our crew setting up for a live shot. An officer opened fire on that female shooter. She's in the hospital tonight. Police later coming to our truck early this evening to review our video as they try to put all the pieces together from this deadly Thursday afternoon.
And officers told me they will stay on the scene tonight with a heavy presence as they rotate in new officers to stay there near 32nd and Kentucky. One officer told me we know there will probably be retaliatory shootings for what happened today, but they want no more violence there tonight. And the victims, while they were being taken to the hospital, University Hospital went under a heightened security setting for the afternoon and early evening. Now we're told that there were no incidents reported. It was all precautionary. And that's where we find a way three's Connie Leonard this evening. She got to talk to some family members of those involved in the shootings today. Connie. Well, Scott, I tell you what, these families are traumatized. The young mother who was killed, she was here at University Hospital this afternoon with her family checking on a pregnant relative. About an hour lady, later, they found her body in a yard. Too many young people are dying. This is my cousin. Too many young people are dying. Y'all need to get out here. Y'all need to get jobs. Y'all need to take care of one another. This is how Thursday's violence ended. Relatives filled with grief at different shooting scenes, all feeling helpless with no answers. I'm trying to find out what happened. Cynthia Murphy found out her son Daniel and two of her nephews had been shot. Her son wounded in the leg. He, he's stable. He's okay. But my other two are not, and they're all in their mid-20s. One of her nephews, 24-year-old Tyson Mims, and another man, 22-year-old Craig Bland Jr., were gunned down and killed at 32nd in Kentucky. Mims' girlfriend, Makiba Lee, the mother of their little boy, rushed back to the neighborhood after hearing that Mims had been killed. She was at the hospital. I told them don't come down here. They came down here anyway. <laughs> That's when Makiba Lee got in the argument with another woman and was shot by that woman in broad daylight in front of a huge crowd of people, including dozens of police officers. An officer eventually shot and wounded Makiba's killer. She came down here to see what was going on with her baby daddy and turned out she got killed. Now a one-year-old boy is an orphan. His parents is gone from the mother to the father. Both of them is gone. Yeah, yeah. It needs to stop. It needs to stop. There's too many black on black crimes are killing each other for no apparent reason. The city leaders today immediately came out and said they're going to be proactive. They're going to try to figure out ways to prevent such a scene from happening again. Let's continue our team coverage right now here at 11 with Wave Three's Katie Bauer. Katie. Yes, yeah, Scott. Mayor Greg Fisher says he remains committed to making Louisville the safest city in America. And today's violence only reinforces that goal. It's unacceptable to me, it's unacceptable to the chief and his team, and it's unacceptable to our, our entire community that there is any violence in our city. Hours after West Louisville clashed with violence, Mayor Greg Fisher and Police Chief Steve Conrad worked to calm fears and move forward. All the individuals involved in today's cowardly acts are either deceased or now in police custody. This was not a random act. These are not the kinds of things that can happen in neighborhoods in the middle of broad daylight. It's unacceptable and we have to find ways to work together to create the kind of community that we all want it to be. Chief Conrad says immediately after the shootings, additional officers were sent to the neighborhood in an effort to increase police visibility, something that will remain. It will enhance our ability to respond to calls for service in the area before that occurs. That is something that we will not only maintain through the evening, through the weekend, but into the coming weeks and months. Staying active and visible is only step one. Mayor Fisher says he plans to sit down with community leaders from across the city in hopes of strengthening communication. Something District 1 Councilwoman Attica Scott says she not only supports, but will make a priority. We got to sit down face to face. We're going to have to sit down with some young folks and come up with a plan of action to quell this violence before the summer gets here because it's only going to get worse if we don't try to address it right now. And Councilwoman Scott lives just blocks away from these shootings today. The mayor and police chief plan to start immediately. They plan to meet with community leaders and ministers in the area.